Okay, evening everyone. It is uh, Monday, 17th of October, still. And, um, excuse me. So, second of the night, because I need to kind of get ahead of myself a little bit. Second Japanese we've got to. Hopefully, you would have already watched my previous one, where I talked about Japanese whiskey as a whole. Part of me is tempted to actually redo the introductions to each region and do them as separate videos as a sort of, I don't really like the time beginner's guide, but sort of an introduction to Japanese whiskey as a whole, or Irish whiskey as a whole, or Speyside, or you know anything like that, just as a kind of separate video that somebody could dive into and go, okay, well, you know, what is Japanese whiskey generally? Anyway, I digress. So. Um, Japanese whiskey set up, essentially, launched commercially by two guys, Shin, uh, Shinjiro Tori, who um, set up the Suntory company, who has the Yamazaki and the Hakushu distilleries. And then this guy, Masataka Takatsuru. Did I get his name right without even reading it? I did, get me. Um, who um, went to Scotland in 1918, um, learnt about whisky production, spent some time at Longmore, spent five months at Hazelburn and Ca uh, Campbelltown, married a um, Scottish woman while he was there, who came back with him to Japan, joined forces with Tory and set up the Yamazaki distillery, and worked there as distillery manager until 1934, before he left to go and set up what he originally wanted to do, which was set up a distillery in the northern island of Japan, prefecture called Hokkaido, and set up the Yoichi distillery, which is here. Now, they also have um, another distillery, which is, and I will badly pronounce this every time I'm going to say this, Miyagi Kyu, or Miyagi Kyo, um, or however, you want to, please, somebody, please tell me how to pronounce this, because I'm just going to embarrass myself every single time. But the Miyagi Kyo, Mi <laughs> shit, Miyagi Kyo distillery, which is here. Now, this is called Nika All Malt, and this is a this is a blended whiskey that's not a blended whiskey because it's a blended malt. So, blended whiskies. Think of Scotch blended whiskies: Bell's, Grouse, uh, White Macay, all of those. Um, is a combination of single malt whiskey from one distillery or multiple distilleries, but it'll be malt whiskey. It's not a single malt. Whiskey. It's malt. I'm, I've got a cold and I've had one already so and it's late and I've got a baby so I've got a multitude of excuses for what I'm talking absolute nonsense blended whiskey <laughs> let's start again blended whiskey are you ready? blended whiskey blended with scotch blended <laughs> scotch blended whiskey <sighs> scotch blended whiskey is I'll get there eventually uh, a combination of malt whiskies from one or more uh, malt whiskey distilleries in Scotland as well as grain whiskey which is produced um, from column stills as opposed to the classic pot stills that do a single batch of spirit at a time using malted barley. Column stills is a continual process that use grain of some form, predominantly corn, which is cheaper to make, um, more cost effective but doesn't taste as good but tends, essentially is used as filler, whereas the malt whiskies are used for your flavor. Right, got me on that? We got there eventually, it only took me about 20 minutes. So, malt whiskey, pot still, column still, grain whiskey. You can find single grain whiskies. They are quite difficult, they tend to need a lot of aging in order to get any sort of complexity of flavor. What they've done with all malt is they've taken malt whiskey, sing, uh, malt whiskey from Yoichi, Malt whiskey from Miyagi, Miyagi Kiao. This is going to really piss me off by the end of these. I'm, it's good if I'm going to do 10 Japanese whiskies because I'm going to get super pissed off at not being able to pronounce this damn thing. So there's more whiskey from Yoichi, more whiskey from Miyagi Kiao, whatever. And then what they've also done is they've taken malt, malted barley, not grain, and run that through a column still or a coffee still as it's known. Coffee, not as in the drink, coffee, C-O-F-F-E-Y, named after Aeneas Coffee, who invented this type of still. But instead of putting grain through that still, they've actually put malted barley. So they've used the technique of a blended whiskey, but used malt to make what they're calling all malt. Um, 
but it's actually a vatted malt, blended malt, whatever you want to call it. But they've used a slightly different technique. Now, I mentioned when I talked about Japanese whiskey in the previous um, review, if you've lasted this long, I, you've done a lot better than I have, um, about the fact that Japanese whiskey, although they pay homage to Scotch and they really do revere Scotch whiskey as, in general, they're not afraid to experiment. They're not afraid to try things out. That's, this is an example of it. Uh, whereas, you know, they've gone, okay, let's not put grain in, in this still. Let's try it with malt and let's then blend it with pot, in pot still whiskey. So it's really unusual. I've not said this sample, because it's half a miniature, came from my good friend Andrew A.P. Butler. Um, this is what the bottle looks like if you were looking to buy it. Um, the whiskey exchange are selling it and it's 35 quid, which for a Japanese whiskey generally is not actually that bad a price. So it's very intriguing. It's one of those where it's like slightly unusual. Does it work? Because with a blended, you know, with a blended whiskey, when you've got your grain whiskey going through the coffee still, you get the, you get this kind of slight, not harshness, but it gives it an edge. When you get a blended whiskey, you get an edge. And if it's unbalanced or if there's, a, you know, a higher percentage of grain to malt, you know, if there's only like 20% malt whiskey and the 80% grain whiskey, it tends to be a bit rough around the edges. You get this, I mean, whether it's the coloring, but I get kind of a plasticiness to it as well. That might be too much influence of coloring that's added. But, and, and looking at this, you know, there's no age statement on this, so it's difficult to say how old the whiskies are. What I also don't know is um, what they've been matured in, whether it's bourbon or sherry or anything like that. Whether colour has been added to this or not, I could not tell you. Absolutely no idea. But are you going to get that edginess because you've used malted barley in that coffee still rather than the grain? You know, it's very, very unusual. And I've, I'm not... If, there's, if anybody knows if there's any other whiskies out there where they've used this technique, please do let me know because I can't think of any at all. I have not tried many whiskies. Yes, I've had 267 up to this point and I've had a fair few more before then, but I've not come across any, but there's plenty of whiskies out there that I haven't had. But if anybody does know about any other distillery or producer that has done a similar version, I'd love to know just to see what this is like. So this, never had this before, no idea, no no expectation of what this is going to be like because I, I honestly don't know what to expect to treat this as a single malt or as a blended whiskey because it doesn't have that grain element. Not helped by the fact that my nose is still blocked up, but we'll give it a go. Okay, so there's a slight oiliness to it, but there's also a there's a freshness which is kind of mint, but also kind of lemon. It's kind, of, yeah. It, there's a citriness, a citrusiness to it, as well as mintiness, as well as this odd oiliness. But it works. It's not. It's not too disparate. It does kind of work. I'll be honest. Most of it's going up one nostril at the moment, but that nostril is having a pretty good time. It doesn't smell overly rich. It's more fresh and zingy. Zingier than I expected, to be honest. Mmm. Really nice mouthfeel. Really rich. The citrusiness, the citrusiness does come through and it turns into a lemon curd. We're, we're talking lemon meringue pie, which I've had a few times, I've, I've mentioned a few times in other tasting notes, God knows which ones, I've done that many at the moment, but this has the elements of lemon meringue pie. So it's got the citrusiness, but it's more of a lemon curd rather than lemon zest or lemon juice. It's got softness of meringue but there is a slightly toasty character to it. It's not quite toasted nuts, but it is like the slightly caramelized top of a meringue. When you've done lemon meringue pie, you either put it under the grill or you get the blowtorch on it and you get that slightly caramelized bit, but it's got the biscuit base underneath as well. Wow. 
there's something else in there as well. It's really difficult to pick up. It's very, very easy drinking. Now the Hibiki Harmony that I had pre prior to this, that was light, that was fresh. This has got a little bit more depth to it, but it's still very, very easy to drink. It's smooth, it's not quite as delicate, but it's still an easy drinker. But there is a definite lemon curd element to this. There is a definite soft lemon feel. Um, and it's very, very pleasant, but you do get that pastry vibe kind of a buttery pastry crust to it, as well as that slightly toasted element. Like I say, it's not quite toasted nuts, but it's a little bit more than kind of toasted meringue. But it's very, very pleasant indeed. This would replace lemon meringue pie quite easily. And there's a lovely rich mouthfeel to it as well. There's a really nice creaminess. It's, <coughs> it's like lemon meringue pie with cream, but, and if you remember it, it's more, because of the mouthfeel, it's more like Super Whip. Or, if you're watching America, I think it's called Cool Whip. And if you watched Family Guy, it's called Quip. Um, but Super Whip, when I was a kid, and I don't know if they do it anymore, was, it was like whipped up cream, but you tend to find it in the freezer and you could kind of like spoon it out. And when it got to room temperature, it was like cream, but it had this really weird, light fluffiness to it and that's kind of the mouth feel to this whereas it's slightly silky but slightly thick so it's lemon meringue pie with a side scoop of super whip on it there you go if you want a more specific tasting note i don't think i can give you one but it is a very very nice whiskey did I get some smokiness on that? Do you know what I think I did? Part of the problem with having a bunged up nose and everything is I'm not getting everything that the, the whiskey can offer. There is a slight smokiness on this. Now, if you watch the Hibiki Harmony one as well, you'll know that I picked up a little bit from, it seemed to be the element of Hakushu. Now, I don't think I've had any Miyagi Kyo, Miyagi Kyo, fucking, it's, Miyagi, whatever the last bit is. And I don't know if like a kushu, that's a slightly smoky one. I think I've got one in the challenge, which is going to be a nightmare. And I'm, before I do that, I'm really going to have to figure out how, how to pronounce it. But I'm wondering what's giving that smoky element. It, again, really subdued, right in the background, really soft, really sweet. But again, as it did with the harmony, lifts everything up. Just makes things ever so slightly interesting. It's not massively dissimilar to the harmony. And I suppose it wouldn't be because it is at the heart of it, it's the same technique as a blended whiskey. It just doesn't have the grain element that the hibiki does because they used barley instead of grain. But they still went through the same process. They've still put something through a column still and then blended it with more whiskies from pot still. But the Flavour profile is not massively different. It really isn't. And to be honest, at 35 quid, I actually said the Hibiki Harmony was good value for money, or not good value, justified at 50 quid. Partly because of the packaging, and I know you shouldn't really incorporate the packaging into it, but sometimes it is a bit of a factor. But for 35 quid, arguably, that's really good value for money. Like, really, really good value for money. Would I, would I spend an extra 15 quid on a Harmony having tried that? Probably not, to be honest. I actually think Nicker, in a not quite direct comparison, but nearly, pretty much win that round, actually, because it's not massively dissimilar. It's not quite as delicate. It's got a little bit more richness to it. But for 15 quid less, I'd probably go for it. Interesting, very, very interesting indeed. So yes, buy yourself a bottle, ideally have a bit of a cold, and go for it. Good stuff. Right, enjoyed that. Uh, I need to get editing because I need to get something up fairly quickly. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Oh, try pressing stop, you numpty. Right, bye.